Hello folks, welcome to the Captain's Academy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Narshida Industries Banthapod. Originally intended as a cargo container extension for the Strategic Transport Assault Gunship System, this little cargo pod has developed into its own thing. Starting as a potentially a outpost, a mobile outpost for the player at level 7, it can develop into a highly functional utility build for an HV, including harvesters, salvage turret, and a mining drill turret, all of which can be placed simultaneously. So let's take a look at this thing. 32k cargo, in addition to 2000 ammo, as well as a couple supplemental boxes. It's here to, perhaps you won't be able to salvage a complete POI, obviously, but you can get some of the key devices turrets, generators, all that sort of thing that you want to keep and haul back to wherever your primary base would be. So we do have a number of bot tier for placements from shields to generators and constructors as well. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So right out of the gate, what we want to do is we'd want to upgrade a CPU. Uh, once we've done that, we can, for Reforged Eden players, we can upgrade our generators here. Move from the smalls to the advanced. This should feed most of your power issues going forward as you upgrade it. Again, you do have slots here for additional upgrade options. Okay, so there's that for generators. Uh, now what we can do for CPU... Uh, Improved, the pair of improved should get most of your CPU demands, but if you need to, if you need to start dipping into the advanced, you should have supplemental placement here. You can go here on the side, uh, maybe just drop one here. Um, so once we've got that in place, we can start utilizing some of this other area for additional components. If you want to go shield, you can do that. Uh, so potential placement there, or if you wanted to, you could go here. Okay, so how are we looking on CPU there? 13 of 21k, so that's pretty good so far. Um, right, so we could perhaps drop a pair of constructors there if we want to mine and refine ore as we go, that'll be an option. Uh, so as we're moving along, if we Still feel that we're pretty tight on some of the placement. You could drag out some additional things here. Maybe you want to go some more constructors, uh, generators. Uh, so if we run out of this placement here using these two sides, what we can do is we can make use of this wraparound frame around this center area. So once that's cleared out, we've opened up a, a nine block placement. So we could do an iteration of Maybe more generators or CPU or uh, perhaps some, some shield extenders. That could be a thing. Okay, so as we move along into maybe some of the mo more moderate Gs, like uh, 2Gs, stuff like that, we'll feel that we want to upgrade our thrusters. Uh, coming out of the gate stock, it can move with a full 32K on a standard G environment, but as that goes up, you know, maybe 2G, something like that, you're definitely going to start feeling the sting, um, and you'll want to utilize that. So for Reforged Eden, we do have placement for a number of large plasma thrusters. So we want to take these slots here. It could be either or, you could go top or bottom, but go with that. Uh, for front, we have options for a pair of them. Okay. Now for... Uh, okay, well, first of all, let's take a look at the advanced thruster. So this would also work for vanilla players. If you obviously don't have access to the plasmas, then you could just slot into the the advanced 3x1 thrusters. So you could go 12 on the back. 
Okay, so that would take care of your forward and reverse, and then so for strafe, we're looking at six on either side of the advanced. It's not too important to get some of the, the overload with strafe, and I'll go over that here in a minute. Um, so, okay, that should should handle that. That's all of your thruster upgrade options. So as the container starts to fill up, the back will start weighing in, um, or loading up rather. And so you'll find that as you get to that point, the pivot will start to increase substantially. So, you know, now maybe the, the pivot isn't that significant. Um, as you load that up, you'll find it uh, start to get really responsive. Well, that's actually not too bad. Um, so that... <laughs> So that gets even better as you load it, all the weights in the back, and it uh, makes for some, some strange characteristics where it really, really pivots really strongly. So it kind of counterbalances some of the lack of strafing thrust. All right, so that concludes our thrusting option. So uh, now that we've taken advantage of all of the placement there, let's see what our CPU is, 19 of 21. So we could probably opt in to throw in a couple more. Well, at least one more improve if we yeah, we haven't done that so we could do advanced cpu here uh keeping in mind that for vanilla players if you need to you could take this out uh repurpose this uh for something else maybe additional storage or something K27, I think that should be sufficient. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got going on here. We have our drill placement. This is going to be a vertical drill. Uh, so rather than having to hassle with uh, like with SV miners having to tunnel in and uh, rotate the build around in a tunnel and get stuck and all that annoying feature, so we had the option for a vertical drill, which I'm starting to find this thing favorably as opposed to doing the SV mining, burrowing and stuff like that, just hovering over the the ore resource and just tunneling down with the drill turret. It seems to be a, a more favorable approach, at least for me anyways, in comparison to the SV. All right, so that's our, our drills. And now we have harvesters, could go three if you, if you want to, if you're just that greedy, could pop that off and you've got four, so. Now we have an all-purpose build in Harvest Anything. It has a lot of function. We have respawn. We've got our oxygen dispenser on this side here. Bridge. Uh, there should be placement in there for a trauma station if you want to work that out. So. so that would need a little more CPU. You'd have to work that in as well if you wanted to go the overload with... So that's, that's closer could go something like that that's more sensible anyways just throw in one advance and you're good maybe throw in an additional shield part for some supplemental resilience okay so part of the the build's uh, uniqueness here is some of the features included are the so something i found out with the hover engines so when you're mining at an angle it tends to drift back so i've included this feature here to where uh, you could turn the hover engines off and see that'll that'll force a drop down and then once it stabilizes you're not going to have an issue of drifting as you load the vehicle in in most cases now in some cases it still might not be able to overpower that but killing that um you should be able to mine over an ore without any issues of dropping in that might be different on a high g planet <laughs> But on the standard G, I don't find any issues with that uh, by killing the hover engine. So that's a feature there. It's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, we have our side light options if we want to light that up. Uh, vertical drill lights. This is going to assist your spotting as you drill down into the ground. Okay, and then we, come, of course, come with a drone hatch. So in order to access this drone hatch it's going to be right here uh, just follow the instructions 
spawn drone doorway while looking away from the hatch, so we just want to go ahead and pop that drone hatch real quick. And we're going to stand out here on either one of these two blocks right at the edge of the door. And there we go. Alright, so if we wanted some um, supplemental defense, we have four options here. Four standard options for stock turret placement options, rather. So you just want to look for these here, these round blocks with the cabinet looking texture. And that should be good there for some drone defense. Um, so the build is designed to work, again, it's designed to work with a uh, stag. Um, now if you aren't using it particularly with that, in conjunction with that build, you could utilize some of this top placement for additional turrets, or maybe you want to move the salvage turret up there or something like that. You know, you got plenty of space up here. So... You just want to go absolutely crazy and put turrets on there. <laughs> Maybe turn it into a, a POI busting harvesting vehicle. I, I guess that could be an option. But mainly it's designed to, for my function anyways, what you do with it, you know, your mileage is going to vary. So the way I'm using it with Stag is as a cargo container. And uh, with the side attachments there, we have a couple options here. If we want to utilize the placement for the turrets, then we're going to want to use the, the vertical mounting. Okay. Now, if we aren't going to be using, if, if we're in like a, a pacified planet or something, and we're not using the turrets, then we could just do for like a real fast quick and go side mounting onto the vehicle <laughs> real quick <laughs> um, running into the ramp that's the issue okay there it is so right so sometimes it's a hassle for people to mount vertically so uh, an option there is to mount sideways and then boom, you're off, ready to go. Now it does come with color options, uh, three of them. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a uh, detailed outline of that in the workshop. If you have any questions, just drop in the comments. I'll do an explanation on that. Um, yeah, that's it. So pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward for a uh, cargo container. Uh, it's a box. <laughs> But it's uh, pretty functional. We've got a high range of function. Nice upgrade option. So could use as a a starter command post, or you know just a uh, simple harvester. All right, folks, that's it. Thank y'all for checking me out. Catch y'all later. Life Force out.